Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We want you all to stand on your feet, if you will. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I hear the Holy Ghost saying, he's helping us tonight. So whatever your need is, he's helping us tonight. And we're going to bless him for his help. He's helping us in the service. He's going to send his word tonight. God is helping us. As we close out this prayer and go into worship, I want you just to lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift those hands all over this building. And I hear the Lord saying he's helping us. So whatever that means to you tonight, he's helping you. His help is here. His help is here. His help is here. His help is here. And we're going to thank him. I want you to thank him for his help. Father, we thank you for your help. We thank you for your help tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, keep telling him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, open up your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Jesus for the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth that do it to all generations hallelujah 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 Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary Pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary.
come on and bless the name of Jesus. Good evening to the saints of the Most High God. Certainly give high honor and esteem to our presiding bishop and chief apostle of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop Charles E. Blake, Sr. Let's praise God for him. Amen. Thank God for our leader. To our sainted and beloved president, and General Supervisor, President of this 62nd Women's International Convention Crusade, Mother Willie Mae Rivers. Amen. Didn't she bless us last night? Amen. We praise God for our mother, certainly to First Lady and members of the General Board, to Mother Young and Mother King, to all of you, my father's children, God has blessed us, and this is Wednesday night. Just two more nights, and it will be over. And hasn't it been glorious already? God is just taking us higher and higher, and we thank God for the presence of the Lord. I want to praise God for Mother Frances Kelly. God bless you, Mother Kelly. And Mother Canty, you called for the grandmothers this morning. And it seemed like almost the house, the entire house, flooded this altar. But we believe God. We're standing on his promises. I believe God moved mightily. While we're here in the city of Atlanta, I believe God moved mightily among our grandchildren, wherever they are. If they're in school, if they're behind bars, if they're out on the street. Mother Canty prayed a fervent prayer, asked God to save our grandchildren, sanctify our grandchildren, baptize them in the Holy Ghost. And even at this very moment, God is moving. God is moving. I want everyone just to rest on your feet. We want to feel the atmosphere again with the Word of God. We want to feel this atmosphere with the Word of God. I want you just to look around at two or three people and quote your favorite scripture, two or three scriptures quote your scriptures, fill the atmosphere with the Word of God. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. My God shall supply all of your needs according to His riches in glory. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings of an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. My God, endure hardness as a good soldier and be sober and vigilant because your adversary walketh about like a warring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But thanks be unto God, who giveth us the victory. We are victorious. We are more than a conqueror. And if God is for us, who can be against us? And we know, and we know, and we know, all things, everything. 
anything, anything works together for our good because we love God and we're called according to his purpose. And so if my people, those that are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal the land, heal the land, Lord. Heal the land, hear our cry. Heal the land, heal the land, heal the land, heal the land, heal the land. And while we're here, heal our minds. Cast the devil out of the mind. The blood of Jesus prevail. The blood of Jesus come against the roaring lion in the name of Jesus. And we decree it. And we decree it. The word said you can decree a thing. Look at your neighbor and just decree whatever you want to decree. Just decree it. We decree it. We decree bodies healed. We decree our husbands saved. We decree a turnaround in our finances. We decree marriages are restored. We decree our children are saved and sanctified and baptized in the Holy Ghost. We decree a thing and it shall come to pass. And then he said, I know the thoughts I think toward you. I know the thoughts. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I know the thoughts I think toward you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil to give you an expected end, a future and a hope. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, he's working right now. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Bless your holy name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody needs a hug. Somebody needs a hug. Just hug them and tell them, I love you with the love of the Lord. Everything's gonna be all right. Everything's gonna be all right. Woo! I call shot top. Everything's gonna be all right. Woo! Hallelujah. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. Woo! Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah.
for worship. We worship him for who he is. He's our king. And our souls delight in him. Because he's our everything. So that's why we worship him for who he is and we praise him for what he's done lift your hands and tell the Lord Lord you are my soul's delight you're my soul's delight and we came to worship him tonight. We will begin the service with prayer by Supervisor F. G. Mitchell. Our Old Testament scripture will be given by Supervisor Armazetta Connor. Our New Testament scripture will be given by Supervisor Ida Porter, after which we will have a selection from our convention choir. Let's receive them in that order. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for being in your presence right now. God, you've been so good. You've been so kind. And you've certainly been wonderful to us. 
God, we lift up holy hands tonight because we feel your presence in the room. God, we ask you to just bless us tonight. Let every word and every song be filled with your grace. Lord, we ask you to touch bodies and minds tonight. Somebody came looking for a miracle. Somebody wants a miracle tonight. Fill the temple, Lord, with your presence. In the name of Jesus, we bind up every spirit that's not of you tonight. Lord, help us to lay it out tonight. Let us take on the things that we need for ourselves tonight. It's not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, God, standing in the need of prayer. And God, we thank you now. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We know you're going to heal. We know you're going to deliver. We know you're going to set us free. So God, we say thank you. We bless your name. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. We ask you to bless all the women of God. Mother Rivers tonight, all of her staff, God. All the men of God. God, give us grace in your sight tonight. Lord, let this service be an extension of your hand all the way from heaven to earth, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory. And we thank you right now. We thank you right now for the things that you already done, for the things that you're going to do. How you made a way out of no way, Lord. Somebody got healed today. Somebody got delivered. Somebody got a word today. And as we get back home, God, let deliverance already be there. We accept it even now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture this evening is from 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter, verses 12 through 14. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locust to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their evil ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. The word of the Lord is blessed. To God be the glory. Acts, the first chapter, the eighth through the eleventh verse. Bless the Lord. But ye shall, not maybe, receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be without holy unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly far toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men, stood by them in a white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up 
from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go unto heaven. God bless the reading of his word and bless us as we go in this beautiful place.
Somebody say, Jesus. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, Jesus. I asked you earlier to say, Jesus is a wonder in my soul. And if he is a wonder in your soul, I want you to say it with some depth from your soul. Jesus, you are a wonder. Jesus told his disciples that as long as I am here, I am the light. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and he was the light. But he said, when I leave, you will be the light. We've come to this woman's convention because we love Jesus. That's the only reason most of us are here. We love the fellowship. But we are basically here because we love Jesus. And we love him and he has empowered us and he has equipped us. He's given us authority. He's given us power. He's given us ability. And now he is not here in the flesh, but we are. He said, as long as I am here, I'll be the light. But when I go away, you are going to be the light. I want somebody that's not embarrassed to get up and declare that I am a light. Consider myself to be a fast-moving energy. I'm a fast-moving energy that has the capacity to make darkness flee. So when I am in the room, darkness has to flee. Come on, the crowd, because I... Get 
Jesus. Now what is the difference between a city? What's the difference between a city and a hamlet? A city has its own municipality. A city is capable of doing whatever needs to be done. Come on and tell the person next to you, I can get the job done. Because I am a municipality. A city has its own water supply. A city has its own police department. A city has its own hospital. A city has its own schools. A city has everything that it needs to function. And God has empowered us with everything that we need. We have the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, I have the Holy Ghost. from Atlanta, Georgia. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that 
is within me. Bless his holy name. Is there anybody here want to bless the Lord with me tonight? Lord, we bless you. We are so glad that we are here tonight and here with the Lord's blessings. And we're just real glad for what God has done in our lives. Atlanta, Georgia is a great city. And I hope that everything is going fine with you. I honor our mother, Mother Rivers, the president of our convention. I honor our bishop, even though he's not in the building, when we're here, he's present. And all of his staff and the women that sit with our mother and everyone that's here. Tonight is civic night. And it is just no greater way than to have and this, uh, on civic night to be able to give you our very, very best. And I am here to acknowledge and present the illustrious, the dynamic, the most wonderful young man that Atlanta could have found anywhere, none other than Mayor Kasim Reed. Will you come forward? understand that I did know that he had an appointment earlier and I thought he had come in. I did not know that. But he has his senior advisor here and Brother Wayne Martin is going to come and make that introduction. Thank you. God bless you, Mother. Glad to see you all and be here tonight. Uh, our mayor wanted to be here, uh, but the U.S. Conference of Black Mayors is in town. And if he missed that, it'd be like Mother McGrew missing tonight's event, but he does send his love and greetings. Uh, you'll hear more from uh, Mike Sterling in a few moments uh, with personal words that were sent uh, and a very high honor sent by our mayor, uh, Mother Rivers, to you. To the saints of God, to all the host bishops, uh, to my own bishop, J.E. Hogan, for Georgia North Central, my own supervisor, Mother Mary Tucker, um, my own pastor and first lady, Mosley, uh, and again, to our esteemed and most august general supervisor, Mother Willie Mae Rivers. What an esteemed privilege and pleasure it is for me to stand here as a son of the Church of God in Christ, uh, a, a sunshine band baby. Uh, uh, I came through the ranks of the purity class, uh, and I was trained to be a young man that loves the Lord and his people, and a young man that loves the Church of God in Christ. I'm so glad that I don't have to join in, but I was born in. Amen, somebody? I reached out to Congressman Lewis, and he really wanted to be here tonight, Mother, but he was called to Washington, D.C. for several votes. Uh, he's helping the president to run our country, uh, but he sent a special honor for you tonight, Mother, and I want to read it. Uh, it's very, very short. It is a certificate of special congressional recognition presented to Mother Willie Mae Rivers for her outstanding and invaluable service to the community and the world. The work that you do through the Church of God in Christ Women's Department resonates throughout the universe and you will forever be loved, signed and affixed on this 30th day of May 2012 by John Lewis, the Honorable Representative in the United States House of Congress for District 5 in Georgia. Mother, we love you and we salute you. And on behalf of Mayor Kasim Reed, another son of the church and an esteemed attorney in the city of Atlanta who now serves as a senior advisor to Atlanta Mayor Kasim Reed, Michael Sterling will come and present the Phoenix Award to Mother Rivers, which is the highest award that a civilian can receive from Atlanta's mayor. Please receive Michael Stroll as he comes on behalf of Mayor Kasim Reed. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. I tell you what, I uh, first want to give honor to God, to Bishop Blake in his absence, 
uh, Mother Willie Mae Rivers, and to all the saints in the house of God tonight, I tell you, this is probably the hardest part of my job. When folks expect to see the mayor and get stuck with me instead. But I tell you what, no matter, uh, no matter your disappointment, I'm very happy to be here, the 62nd International Women's Convention and Crusade, and to be here on behalf of the Honorable Mayor Kasim Reed, the 59th Mayor of Atlanta. I serve as Mayor Reed's senior advisor. Atlanta has been known for many years as the city that is too busy to hate. However, under Mayor Kasim Reed's leadership, he said that would not be enough. That would not be sufficient for the city of Atlanta. He said we had to be a city that was not too busy to love. And when you really think about Mother Rivers' leadership, when you think about the mission of the women of the Church of God in Christ, and when I think about growing up in the church, that is what our church has always been about. Never too busy to love. Never too busy to visit the sick. Never too busy to pray for the lost. Never too busy to feed the hungry. Never too busy to house the homeless. Never too busy to help the downtrodden. Never too busy to convert the sinner to a saint. Mother Rivers and the women of the Church of God in Christ have never been too busy to love. I tell you what, saints, it's very personal to me because the truth is I wouldn't be here standing before you today except that this church was not too busy to love. See, my mom is somewhere in the audience. She ought to stand up, and I'm sure she's telling folks that's her son right now, district missionary. Sterling, you ought to stand up, Mom, and let them know I'm your son. You see, the truth is that my story is unlikely without the Church of God in Christ. I grew up in a small corner of Southeast Texas, attended the Greater Little Zion Church of God in Christ under Pastor Smith, and that church of about 100 people, they tarried and they prayed over me all the time. Mother Rivers, they would pray so long as a child that you would, your eyes would open up and you see spots everywhere. Uh, that's just how I grew up at old school church. That's how they would pray over me. But I remember those prayers. When I graduated from Morehouse College, I remember those prayers. When I graduated number four in my law school class, I remember those prayers. When at the age of 25, I became a corporate lawyer for one of the largest law firms in the world, I remember those prayers when Attorney General Eric Holder appointed me to be the youngest federal prosecutor in the city of Chicago. I remember those prayers. And when at the age of 29, I became a senior advisor to one of the largest mayors in this country, I remember those prayers. Mother Rivers, I'm not confused. You don't get to where I'm at without some praying folks in your life. See, my story is a Church of God in Christ story. And since you did that for me, the least I could do for you is come and welcome you to the city of Atlanta. And I just want to make something clear. As long as I help govern this city, as long as the mayor turns to me for advice and I help govern this city, the Church of God in Christ will always be welcome. So if you want to go shout down Peachtree Street, you ought to feel welcome. If you want to go pray for some folks on Ivan Allen Boulevard, you ought to feel welcome. If you want to come lay hands on City Hall, you ought to feel welcome. We could use some of that. Mother Rivers, Mother Rivers, on, on behalf of the Honorable Mayor Kasim Reed, I'd like to present you with the Phoenix Award, Atlanta's highest honor. And it reads as follows, 
Congratulations. On behalf of the people of Atlanta, I commend Mother Willie Mae Rivers, the General Supervisor of the Women's Department of the Church of God in Christ, as they gather to celebrate their 62nd Women's International Convention and Crusade. Their motto of better homes, better schools, better communities, and a better world has proven fulfilled through the continuous volunteerism and public service that Mother Rivers has provided since her inception as General Supervisor in 1997. She is also the founder and president of Community Christian Women and Men Fellowship, which provides to the less fortunate and assists during times of bereavement. Mother Rivers is a true servant in the spiritual community and continues to touch the lives of her family, friends, and now the city of Atlanta. We thank you for all that you do. We salute you as an invaluable inspiration to all. Signed, the Honorable Mayor Kasim Reed, Mayor of Atlanta. God bless you. God bless the incoming of our presiding bishop and members of the general board. To our precious representative of the mayor and other officers of this great city of Atlanta, Georgia, on behalf of the Church of God in Christ, Women's Department, the International Women's Convention, and the officials of this great church, I want to thank you for your warm and heartfelt welcome to the city of Atlanta, Georgia, and for the wonderful presentation. I am truly, truly humbled and honored to host our 62nd Women's International Convention Crusade in this city amid its splendor and beauty. A city renowned as and known as a business and cultural center of the Southeast. A city incredible historical significance one long regarded as the hub of Afro-American political power and culture, a cradle of the civic rights movement and the home of our beloved Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. We arrived in your city excited and ready to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and to positively impact the lives of the people of this city. We come with a vision and a mission to help to create better homes, better schools, better community, and a better world. In addition to the nightly service with the anointed and powerful speakers and the most talented singers of the world, the world has ever seen, and the numerous daytime conferences and seminars. We will also be active in street ministries. We will visit homeless shelter, and just to name a few of our ministries. When our convention is over and we leave Atlanta, we hope and pray that through our ministries that we will call 
into attention during the week. We will leave an indelible, indelible mark on this city, one that will propel in all the future with a steadfast determination like never before. We will be a shining example of other cities in America, around the world. Again, thank you for your warm welcome and hospitality and presentation. May the Lord continue to bless this city as you lead and bless richly the city of Atlanta and all of its residents. Thank you so very much for your wonderful presentation. At this time, we will have a special presentation from the grandson of Mother Rivers, Brother Robbie Rivers. After which, we will have our banner parade. I'm on business for the king. I'm on business for the king. The king's business requires haste. I don't have time to waste. I'm on business for the king. For they belong to God. Y'all familiar with that one? They belong to God. Let me hear you, let it ring out. All the glory, the honor, the praises, all day they belong to God. Come on, clap your hands, clap your hands and bless God. We bless him tonight and to our presiding Bishop Blake and to Mother Rivers, who I stand in honor of and um, with proudness and thankfulness to God for being connected to her. Uh, she's got a new, another CD out, y'all. Tell somebody, say, Mama Rivers got another CD out. Can you play the track right quick? Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Receive Mother Ruby May Rivers and the family. Oh Lord, I'm in your care. Oh, put your hands together. Oh Lord, I'm in your care. Now, General Mother, y'all, Mother Willie. our mother as she carries on the word of God through and ministers to, to others that needs the, uh, the presence of God in their lives. Amen? She also has 
a, uh, what we call a, com a personalized computer mouse pad. Those that got computers, we have those for you as well. Thank you so much for this space and God bless you. We'll see you at the booth. God bless you. Greetings to you this evening. I give honor to God on tonight, to our presiding bishop, Bishop Charles Edward Blake, and the entire general board. God bless Bishop John Henry Sherrod and the board of bishops. God bless my bishop, Bishop J. Drew Shearer. <laughs> to Mother Ruly May Rivers, our general mother and our convention president, Lady May Blake, Mother's cabinet, and to all of you, the Lord's people, it is my happy privilege on tonight to stand before you to introduce my First Lady, Evangelist Karen Clark Shear. She is the wife of Bishop J. Drew Shear, the prelate of Michigan North Central. She is the proud mother of Kiara and J. Drew Jr. and the grandmother of Jacob. She is the daughter of the great gospel pioneer singer, Dr. Maddie Moss Clark. And she's a member of the world-renowned Clark Sisters. As First Lady of Greater Emmanuel Institution of Church of God in Christ, in Detroit, Michigan, and the North Central Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction of Michigan. She exemplifies her ability to carry out her various roles with grace and anointing. She performs her God-given assignment and shares her gifts of excellence to her credit on numerous awards and nominations, including four Grammy Awards, five Dove Awards, eight Stella Awards, just to mention a few. She received such recognition with poise, grace, and humility. Evangelist Shed gives God praise for allowing her to experience the fulfillment of a lifelong dream, partnering with her husband, Bishop J. Drew Shed. She serves as the CEO of their own recording label, Carew Records. The continuous song of Evangelist Shared is to live gracefully with perseverance, faith, and love. As an anointed vessel of God, she endeavors to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to the far reaches of the world through her music and her evangelistic ministry and even more by living a life submitted to Christ. Saints of God, after the sermonic selection, will you please stand to your feet and receive our speaker, affectionately known in North Central Jurisdiction of Michigan, she is our princess. Our speaker this evening is Evangelist Karen Clark Shedd. God bless you. 
Your family will get better. Do I have any believers? I believe that God will provide. I believe the promise that He made. Oh, I believe it's already. Come on, let's declare it prophetically in the house tonight. If you believe it's already done, whatever it is you're standing need of, whatever it is you're asking God for, it's already done. It's already, it's already done. Oh, my blessing, my miracle, my deliverance. I believe it's worth. your hands and give God glory and just name it and claim it and tell somebody it's already done father we thank you for this time we thank you for this place we thank you for this gathering oh God we thank you for your presence being in this place God thank you for gracing us with your presence and allowing us to come back together once again, God. Oh God, I pray that you will bless this church. Thank you for what you have done and the awesomeness of your hand that you have showed in this grand church of God in Christ. Lord, we lift you up and give you glory tonight. We pray that your word would come with power and might. We pray that your word will come, God, so the enemy will be terrified and the body of Christ will be edified and most of all, God, you will be glorified. And we glorify your name, God. Everything that we say and do, you be honored and you be glorified for the things that you have done and the things that you will do. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Can you clap your hands again for God and his awesomeness? God bless you, you may take your seat. I do honor the Lord for this night tonight, for just being in the land of the living. It's just a blessing to be able to wake up in the morning and to just open your mouth and say, God, I thank you for another day. And I don't take it for granted because God has certainly been kind to me and I, I have a reason to praise and worship God tonight. And I come for no other purpose but for him to give the glory. Amen. And I do honor the Lord for this time and this place. And I'm just happy to be here because I'm here with my sisters and my brothers, and I do give God the honor and glory for the activities of my lands. I would like to give honor to the honorable presiding bishop of this great church, Bishop Charles Blake. We honor you, Bishop. We honor you. And to Bishop P.A. Brooks and Bishop Macklin, the entire general board, and to my father, Bishop John H. Sheard and the Board of Bishops, and to Mother Rivers. Mother Rivers, Mother Rivers, Mother Rivers. Mother, I have to say, just pause right here and say that, of course, my mother, Dr. Maddie Moss Clark, the late Dr. Maddie Moss Clark, would be grateful to know that you have given, looked out for her girls and given this opportunity for us tonight. I thank you for this opportunity for I realize that there are so many women and evangelists, missionaries in this awesome church 
that could have chosen and done a better, that you could have chosen and done a better job than I. This is such a milestone in my life. This platform I esteem highly. I will never forget this moment that you've given me. I do not take it for granted. I thank you, Mother. Can you help us appreciate Mother tonight? And I give honor to my first lady, Lady Mae Blake. We honor you tonight. God bless you. And to my wonderful supervisor, Mother Corrine Wade Adams, much love to you. Thank you for that introduction. And to my mother, Mother Willie Mae Sheard. Can you stand, Mother, and show your beauty? Amen. I love you. To the executive board of women's department, of course, especially to Mother Lewis, Mother um, Dr. White, and to all of the women that worked so hard to make this women's convention, we honor you. And to the, uh, all of the supervisors, the bishop's wives, and all the women of God, and especially to Mother Mary Jane Walton, Mother Louise Patterson, and Mother Owens, these women I honor in my life. And to my big sisters, Jackie and Dorinda, will you stand, please? Those are my big sisters. Amen. Of course, my sister uh, Dorinda is my mentor in the ministry, so as I take this flight, she'll be my co-pilot, just in case the plane decides to fall. And to my pride and joy, my children, Kiera, will you stand? That's my baby. So proud because she's a graduate of Wayne State University. So proud of you. And my son, Jay Drew, will you stand? He's on the drum. Oh, he looks very neat and nice. I'm so proud. And he is a uh, senior at Mary Grove College in Detroit, Michigan so proud and what can I say about the man of my life who makes life worth living all to my husband who has given me the best 28 years of my life and I'm honored to know that I'm his wife his girlfriend and his baby's mama all in one person his swag shakes the very foundation of my heart. He's my honey and my moon and my music and my tune. Please help me celebrate God for my king, my Boaz, my husband, Bishop J. Drew Shield. I love you, honey. I had to get that out the way. And to my church family, Greater Emmanuel at home, thank you for your prayers in North Central Jurisdiction. And to all of my sisters out there, and especially to my sister Angie Rivers, God bless you, much love to you, sweetie. And to all of you, God's people, I'm just glad to be home with my sisters and my brothers. Are you all praying for me? Well, can you go to the Word tonight with me? And I'm going to go to the book of Luke, the 22nd chapter, the 47th verse, and uh, we'll begin from the, the 22nd chapter, the 47th verse, to the 51st verse. And I'll be reading from God's Word version of the Bible. And it reads, while he was still speaking to the disciples, a crowd arrived. The man called Judas, one of the 12 disciples, was leading them. He came close to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, do you intend to betray the Son of Man with a kiss? The men who were with Jesus saw what was going to happen. So they asked him, Lord, should we use our swords to fight? One of the disciples cut off the right ear of the chief priest's servant. But Jesus said, stop, that's enough of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. I would like to place emphasis on the 48th verse when it says, Jesus said to him, Judas, do you intend to betray the son of man with a kiss? 
And then the 51st verse, but Jesus said, stop, that's enough of this. Well, my subject tonight, whatever you do, don't bother my Judas. Leave my Judas alone. Can you just tell your neighbor, say, whatever you do, don't bother my Judas. I admonish you tonight to please understand a few attributes of this man, Judas. He can be labeled as a betrayer, deceitful, or some would say a traitor. I'm reminded of a story of two parents and their little girl was riding on their way to church and they engaged in a conversation about a fellow church member by the name of Sister So-and-So. We all have a Sister So-and-So in our church. She was Sister So-and-So when you couldn't remember her name, when you couldn't call her by her real name, she was sister so-and-so, oh, when you felt like, God forbid, calling her out of her name. Oh, yes, yeah, she's known to be a number of things. And according to the parents' description, she was two-faced. Uh, somebody wrote a song about sister so-and-so, and they said, they smile in your face, and all the time, they're trying to take your place and they call them backstabbers. Oh, don't y'all leave me out here by myself. She can be a hand clapping, tongue talking, foot stomping, and two faced all at the same time. Oh, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about sister so-and-so. Oh yeah, she is one who speaks in tongue, but don't speak to nobody else. You know sister so-and-so. She is the one who testified and said, if I had 10,000 tongues, it still wouldn't be enough. And as she testifies, the rest of the church is grateful that she don't have 10,000 tongues because she causes enough damage with the one tongue she already had. I'll just touch somebody and say, you know her. She is the one who's dressed in white. Uh, on the outside, but her heart is black as coal on the inside. I'm not talking about you. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about sister so-and-so. So, 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 when they got to church, when the parents got to church, the little girl walked up to sister so-and-so and kept staring and looking at both sides of her face. And sister so-and-so said, why are you looking at me so hard, little girl? And the little girl said, I'm just trying to see because my mama and daddy said you had two faces. <laughs> but can I tell you tonight that sister so-and-so wasn't the first church member with two faces. As you look closely in our text, Judas was the first man that walked with Jesus wearing two faces. Oh my God, I, I know that many of you are wondering how in the world can you even think or tell a person who's protecting you from your deceiver or betrayer to leave them alone? In our text, if you consider the actions of Jesus, who is undoubtedly the perfect man, he exemplifies how to embrace a man who betrayed him. Oh, many of us in the church want to think Judas only hangs around outside the church. Oh, I wish that was so, but I'm sorry to say that Judas likes to hang around inside the church too. So I'm here to tell you, please be advised when you run into Judas, don't let him frustrate you. Don't let him interrogate you. Don't let him intimidate you. Oh, but my question to you is you gotta do like Jesus do. Oh, you gotta say within yourself, what would Jesus do? Would you respond like Jesus? Judas was no mistake. It's not just by happenstance that you have a Judas in your life. He was handpicked for our benefit to help us be strong soldiers in the army of the Lord. He also played 
a selected role crucial to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. No one really helped Christ reach his goal like Judas. Oh yeah, uh-huh. Judas planned for mission impossible, but what he didn't know is that he helped mission to be possible. Oh, because if you think about it for a moment, over 2,000 years ago, oh, that's why we sing that song, live and he loved me, die and he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Well, in order, in order for you to understand this today, this evening, there must be an inner awareness within your heart of knowing who you are in God. So you must have a serious relationship with God because when the deceiver knocks at your door, you don't have to hit the panic button. Oh, because if you hit the panic button, you might do or say some things that's not pleasing to God. Oh, I don't know about you, but my relationship with God, oh, is it too important to me? My relationship with God is not going, it's so important to me, it's not going to let me look at you and worry about you talking about me and who going to be on this board and who going to put me up on this night. My relationship with God means more to me, my worship, because when me and God get together and I go into his secret place me and God talk and we go into the secret closet how many of you know your relationship God hears your prayer I gotta preserve my relationship uh, my relationship is important to me because when I get down on my knees I don't want God to be thinking about what I have done uh, to my sister and my brother but I want my relationship my relationship is so important oh with God until it reassures me that he has everything under control I said he has everything every sickness every demonic spirit every witch every warlock oh I'm declaring it in the house tonight every control freak he got you in he got you under control Yandiosata. Oh yeah, that's why I don't worry about my enemy. The Bible said it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. If he can control the winds and the seas and they obey him, he can control the lions and the dead. Oh yeah, he knows how to control the one. If he can control all of them, he knows how to control the one who throw the rocks and hides their hands. Oh, I want to serve notice to sister so-and-so tonight, just in case she in the building. I just want to serve notice to you and tell you, you can't hide from God. You can't, you may try to hide from me, but you can't hide from God. You can plot schemes and set up conniving ways behind my back. But what you don't realize is that God is watching my back. Because the Bible says the eyes of the Lord is in every place beholding the good and the evil. Oh yeah, you can't bypass Jesus. That's why they call him omniscient God. He's all-knowing God. He knows your little dirty stuff. Oh yeah, that's why they call him awesome God. Jesus knew Judas was dirty when he picked him. Jesus, he knew it. He had all the power in the world to throw Judas under the bus. But he didn't. He picked him anyway. And all of us in here had some dirty in us. But God picked you anyway. I got to We all was an ex something. Somebody in here was an ex liar. We all was an ex some. But thanks be unto God. He picked us. He looked beyond my faults. And he saw one of my knees or tell somebody he picked you he picked you anyway if you think about it it was nothing but the grace of God all oh, the 
grace. Thank God for the grace. Grace was my replacement. That's why we can call it amazing grace. Because it was amazing. Oh, when folks said you don't deserve it. But grace knocked on your door and gave you another chance. Thank God for grace. Oh God, take your seat for a moment. I just felt a little something. I just, I just felt a little something. You see, saints dealing with Judas, if you not prayed up and fasted up, you would get caught up in the games he tried to play. So you got to do like the Bible says. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You got to put on the whole armor of God so you can stand against the wiles of the devil or tell somebody it's on now. Or when the saints get together and they go to talking about putting on some armor, it's on now. I got my clothes on now. I'm ready to fight now. I'm armed and dangerous now. You have to stay armed and dangerous so you won't lose your cool, saints. Because some of us have been delivered from some stuff. Oh, can I talk to some real folk? Some of us have been delivered. And we got that testimony. The Lord has brought me from a mighty long way. You can shout. You can dance. You can speak in tongues. And run around this building out of breath. And roll in the floor. But the enemy still knows which buttons to push. Oh, can I talk to some real folk? You know some of y'all with some hood rats. Oh, oh don't y'all come on. I need I need you know you know the Lord had, then delivered you. You was ghetto fabulous. Oh, but thanks be unto God. Oh, all of us didn't grow up on the hill. Some of us grew up in the hood. I'm glad they asked a question. Can any good come out the hood? Y'all better stand up and say, I know, I know some good can come out. I just needed some witnesses out there that, that, that can be a witness that the Lord can deliver you. That's why we have the testimony. He picked me up, turned me around. Oh, thanks be unto God. Oh, see, at, an, at the end of the day, we have to face our Savior and do like the Bible says. Oh, you have to be able to withstand the enemy in this day and time having done all to stand that's why we pray the prayer if you find anything God that shouldn't be Lord take it out take out envy take out strife I want to be right in the eyes of God oh yeah so you see the saints of God as you could consider the part Judas played you probably rather have a friend like John whose character and personality traits one Jesus or you might prefer Peter which I call the gangster he was bold and ready to fight any and everyone who threatened his beloved master but Peter even challenged Jesus himself rebuking him for his determination to die well saints of God the truth of the matter is Jesus could have accomplished his purpose without either Peter John or Judas however he left them in place for a particular reason oh but i want to zero in on the specific role that judas played for without judas jesus oh never would have reached the hope of his calling when god has a calling on your life saints of god judas may have to be a part of the process to prepare you for the task oh my god i said judas may have to be a part of the process to help you grow in god but listen let me tell you if god has called you to be on the usher board he has to give you patience oh yeah i applaud these ushers uh, for their patience you see that wasn't my calling mother i'm gonna confess it wasn't my calling because if i ushered somebody to a seat three times and they told me they didn't want to sit in none of those seats it would be wrong and ungodly if i kindly told them that there's plenty of room on the floor 
that's not my calling. That's that. that. You got to know that Judas has to be a part of the process because it causes you to grow in certain areas. It doesn't matter if you've been in a church for 40 years. It's still some areas you have to grow. It's still some areas you have to work on. For the Bible says, sanctify yourself, therefore, and be ye holy. That's what y'all taught me, mother. Be ye holy, for I am the Lord their God. Jesus knew all along about Judas. He allowed him to fellowship with him. But when Jesus, when Judas showed his true color, Jesus was somewhat real cool and calm and checked him and say, I see you. Jesus did not walk away from God. Oh yeah, he did not walk away from what God called him to do. We that are in the church must keep your focus. I come to encourage you tonight. Keep your focus and remain loyal even when Judas is in the midst. Don't get off the mother's board because Judas wants to participate on the board too. Don't get off the choir stand because Judas wants to sing too. You just have to remain faithful and don't let nobody move you out of your rightful place. For the Bible says, be ye steadfast, unmovable in all ways, abounding in the work of the Lord. And know that your labor is not in vain. Oh yeah, it was some sisters that sang a song and asked the question, is my living in vain? Is my praying in vain? Oh yeah, it was some golden girls who sang that song. I know sometimes you feel like it's my labor in vain and they answered it back and said no of course not it's not all in vain because up the road somebody say up the road up the road uh, is it turn again I'm here to tell you tonight God said to those of you that have been working in the church for years serving the men and women of God stay there and do what God called you to do don't let Judas control you by giving in to his foolishness. The Bible says, if ye are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Tell somebody I'm about to be fat now. I'm about to be fat. Why them same folk talking about you, they're going to look up and see you blessed in the city, blessed in the fields. Oh, just look at your neighbor and say, watch me. Watch me. You ain't seen nothing yet God's gonna pay me for holding my bag for being an adjutant I know you've been calling me an agitator but thanks be unto God he gets the glory he gets all the glory and you're gonna tell somebody I'm blessed God sent me here to tell you it's your time now they're gonna look up and say how you get that spot how you get that place how you get there? Oh, but the Bible says if you be faithful over a few things, he'll make you a ruler over many. Sometimes, sometimes Judas is sent to be a thorn in your flesh. Oh, Lord, hold on a minute. But you cannot let Judas see you sweat. Just maximize the moment and use it for what it's worth. Don't let the devil make you walk away from your destiny. You have to put on the breastplate of righteousness and say, God, got a destiny for me to get to. I got a destiny. Sometimes you got to get sick and tired and say, for God, I live. I don't care what nobody say. I don't have time. Sometimes you get like that. I don't have time to be fooling around pecking with chickens, oinking with pigs, and barking with dogs. I don't have I'm serious about this thing, y'all. Oh, I've got to occupy my destiny. Look past those people who betrayed you. I'm almost finished. And just tell them thank you. Thank you for making 
making me pray harder. Thank you for making me press harder. You didn't do nothing but make me do exactly what the Bible says. Says I press toward the mark of the prize of the call, high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. But wait a minute, I'm almost through. This man, Judas, was a man Jesus trusted and allowed him the honor to hang around. Jesus, he made a mistake and found interest elsewhere for whatever reason. He made him turn on Jesus. Oh yeah, we gotta pray, saints. That's some of the reason why our young ladies are messed up today because they find interest elsewhere. So they turn on Jesus and confide in a man for a relationship and think that their so-called love for the uh, for them will hold them together. Oh, but we must teach our young ladies that they must be more interested in establishing a relationship with God rather than with a man who has more respect to get license for his dog than to get in license to marry you. Oh, y'all too quiet on that one. He got papers for his house, papers for his car, papers for his boat, and he can't get papers for you. You better tell Roscoe, you better get to stepping. Because as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Oh yeah, this world is confused. This, I said this world is confused, saints. We got to pray for our president. Oh my God. I, I'm so sorry that I can't walk in the bathroom, mother. I can't walk in the bathroom. I'd be wondering. I'd be looking at the one with the skirt. But I walk in there and look in the mirror and it looked like a man behind me and come to find out it's a woman. This world is confused. Saints of God, last I checked, God didn't ordain holy matrimony for Elizabeth and Mary. You have to stand firm on the word. Don't lower your standards for anyone else. Oh, I'm still on my subject. I said he turned, Judas turned on him. You have to say within your heart, for I am persuaded oh, that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Saints of God, if we have no heaven to look forward to, then we could live like we want. We want God to bring everything to us on a silver platter. We want God to arrest the enemy, but you won't stop sleeping with the enemy. One thing I despise to hear some of our girls say, mother, is that there are no men in the church. Stop saying that, ladies, because I ordered one. I ordered one. I got on my knees and prayed for a sanctified Holy Ghost filled one. Stop saying that, ladies. Oh, my God. And another thing, stop saying all men are dogs. That's not true. Just because you had one bad experience doesn't mean they all come like that. Oh, did you ever think that maybe the reason why you attracting those so-called dogs is because you dishing out kibbles and bits? Wagging your tail to see who you can catch next. The devil is a liar. And don't be wagging your tail in front of my husband either. But I am here to tell you that you need to adhere to the word of the Lord. When it says seek and ye shall find. Oh my God. It says seek and ye shall find now. And the door shall be open. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And these things shall be added to you oh yeah the bible says oh asking it shall be given whether you want to accept it or not you gonna need a judas in your life oh my god i remember one time I, my husband went through an experience i admire him for his calmness mm, yeah i'm ready now d he displayed uh, during his betrayal experience. Uh, I learned uh, from my pastor uh, when he said, uh, you gotta use uh, your haters uh, as elevators. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, uh, uh. 
Well, well, well. I, I come to tell you, while they're trying to push your button, they're pushing you closer, only closer to God. Just remember, if God before us, he's more than the world against us. So hold on, saints of God. That the Lord fight your battle to the ones who covers me. I appreciate you looking out. Oh, but don't bother my Judas. God is about to prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Those same folk that tried to kill Jesus. Character, my God, only build his character. Saints, I stop by to tell you tonight you might have been left out you might have been put out you might have been thrown out you might have been casted out you might have been forgotten about but remember the Bible says oh they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength you shall mount up on wings wait on God to work on your behalf just say thank you for watching my back but don't bother my Judas you gotta say thank you because my God he knows how to handle it on my behalf you might feel discouraged but the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord feed off of adversity in your life it doesn't matter how cold the kiss it doesn't matter how callous the heart just remember the bitter kiss of betrayal can never stop the promises of God I said it can't stop God from doing his work on you he promised never forsake you so you ought to thank God for your Judas stand on his promises if Judas had never tried to take your peace you wouldn't know he promised to keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me if Judas had never tried to push you to fall you wouldn't know that they, he is able to keep you from falling I present you faultless before the presence of his glory if he had never tried to discourage me I would know be not weary in well doing for you shall reap if you faint not if he had never hit me with the weapons I would know that no weapon no weapon formed against me will not prosper if he had never started a fire I would know that I've been tried tried in the fire I, I come out as pure gold some of y'all was in some fire the enemy intended for you to stay in the fire you were sick at the end of your rope you was in the fire but I come to tell you you need to thank God that you didn't die in the flame I'm still here I'm still standing you ought to praise him cause you didn't die in the flame you gotta learn how to take your Judas with you and tell him the Lord is my shepherd I'm reminded mother and I'm getting ready to go of a lady an old lady who lived next door to an atheist and every time she would take out her trash every week and every morning she drag a trash to the corner to the curb 
and look up in the sky and say, Lord, I thank you for another day. Then the next week came. Thank God. The next week came. She took out her trash and she was saying, Lord, I thank you. You've been so kind. You let me be able to drag my foot. I thank you for another day. Then the next week came. She went to take her trash out. And when she took her trash out, she said, Lord, I love you. You so amazing. And she looked over and the atheist came running out the door. He said, wait a minute, woman, I'm tired of you talking all that mess, talking to a God who doesn't even exist. I'm now, I'm going to start taking out your trash. She looked up and said, Lord, thank you for making the devil bless me. Some of y'all out there, you got to know that God will make the devil bless you. He will, he will, he will, he will make the devil, the wicked is laid up for the righteous. God will never, he leads you. You got to know, hang in there. Keep on fasting. Don't give in. Because God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all, all that he can ask. Clap your hands and give God glory. Oh, come on and give him glory. Oh, come on and give him glory in the house. I just come here to encourage you tonight. I just want you to grab somebody by the hand and just tell them, say, I appreciate you. I, I thank you for being kind to me. But one thing I want you to know is don't bother my Judas because my Judas is helping me get to a place where God wants me to get to. My Judas is there to help me build my faith. Oh, wait a minute. Can I, can I confuse the enemy right quick? You see, the enemy thinks because he throw little darts at you that you ought to be going into a pity party. Oh, but how many of the saints of God know how to confuse the devil? I got to set some of y'all going through sickness. You got aches and pains in your body. But tell somebody that's a good place to praise him. You got aches and pains. You got some loved ones you've been praying for. We about to shout and confuse the devil. He think you ought to be at a pity party. But you about to find your way to the praise party. You need to find your way. Lord, I will bless the Lord. I will bless your God. I will praise you. Oh, oh God. You ought to praise your way. Praise your way out of it. Praise your way through it. Praise your way in it. anybody in here really know you got something that you want the Lord to do I just want you to go to three people and tell them say we coming out of this cuz I'm shouting my way out of this one I'm shouting my way out of this one I'm shouting my victory I'm shouting my breakthrough I'm shouting my troubles oh, I'm shouting it's over it's over now it's over now
Thank you, Jesus. Somebody need to be encouraged tonight. Before you leave, you can stop the music. Before you leave, you know, this would be all in vain if we did not call an altar call. Somebody need to be discouraged, encouraged rather, and you feel like, I can't take it no more. I've been working in the church, but I need to grow a little stronger. I want you to move right quick. We're gonna play some, we're gonna pray some faith on you. Anybody in here, you know your faith can be stronger. Oh yeah, or oh, somebody, I didn't preach tonight. I spoke rather a life-changing experience. And I want you to come tonight and give God all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Oh, come on, that's it. Anybody here who say, I want my faith to be stronger. I want God to be pleased with me. That's it. Come on, saints of God, let's praise God for these that are coming. Oh, come on, don't pity pat God. Come on, let's praise God for these that are coming. You got to know that God has something for you to do. And don't you let nobody take you and move you out your rightful place. Because when God has a calling on your life, he has your back. As long as your heart is right, don't you worry about your enemy. That's it. Come on, come on, come on. Your faith can be stronger. Lord, I want to push a little higher. I want to work in the church. But it seems like a struggle sometimes. Oh, I speak the struggle off of your life. I come against it in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit, every discouraging spirit. I, I come against you right now. Build the faith now. You know the heart's desire. You know the heart's desire. Give them the press back. Give them the press back, God. In the name of Jesus. Do it right now, God. Have your way. Have your way, God. In these persons. Put a little bit more, a little more usher in their spirit, a little bit more unction in their souls. That's it, that's it, that's it. Pour out to God. That's it. Worship Him. Let Him see your worship. He says, They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. I give you my heart, I give you my mind, I give you my soul of heaven, God. Hallelujah. My mind belongs to you. Oh, God. Oh, yes, God. I say yes to you, God. It's not about the way I feel, how things should go, but it's all about you, Jesus. Oh.
Make the day. 